In the midst of the controversy over the leaked Supreme Court draft opinion, Catholic President Joe Biden weighed in on the matter, making some very specific comments about abortion, even citing God to justify the practice. Here now, with his thoughts on the president's comments, is the Archbishop of San Francisco, Salvatore Cordelioni. Archbishop, thank you for being here. I, I want to play for you what President Biden had to say on Tuesday in response to the Supreme Court draft. Listen. Roe says what all basic mainstream religions have historically concluded, that the, right, that the existence of a human life and being is the question. Is it at the moment of conception? Is it six months? Is it six weeks? Is it, is it quickening, like Aquinas argued? I mean, so the idea that we're going to make a judgment that is going to say that no one can make the judgment to choose to abort a child based on a decision by the Supreme Court, I think goes way overboard. Uh, Joe Biden is a professed Catholic archbishop. He's arguing that someone should be able to, quote, abort a child, he says those words, and that mainstream religions are confused over when life begins. Is that the case? Where to begin? Abort a child already tells you the illogic of that position. Abort a right. child, the child in the womb. So just by using that phrase, he's admitting that a child is being killed. So it shows the illogic of the position. The point number two is when human life begins is not a question for religion. It's a question for science. And we know from science that human life begins at conception. So there's this kind of deflective technique of calling it a question of religious belief. If we think it's that, then we get into a, a quandary from which we cannot escape. Because at some point, the law has to draw a line and say, beyond this point, this human being cannot be killed. So it will be, in effect, the government deciding which religious belief everyone has to accept. At least uh, we can infer that because if we base the idea on a human life should not be innocent, human life should not be killed, or we're saying it is a human life, but it, ha it can legally be killed up to this point. Either way, there's, there's a moral question there's a, a, a religious question, ethical question, the government's going to have to take that position. If the position is human life begins at that point, then they're opposing one person's religious belief on everyone else. And one can ask, mm -hmm. why at birth? Now, states that want to be more limiting of abortion are using the heartbeat as, as the uh, threshold. Uh, what about the brainwave activity? What about on the other end when the child utters the child's first words? That shows self-reflective consciousness. Someone could, their religious could belief could be that that's when human life begins. So should it be legal to kill a child outside of the womb before the child utters the first words? So this gets uh, us into an unescapable um, uh, quagmire. And we have to, there are different aspects, right? There's the scientific aspect when human life begins. Uh, There's the moral aspect about it's wrong to kill innocent human life. There's the legal aspect about what rights does a human life have in different stages of life, uh, different conditions. You know, minors don't have some rights that adults have. People who have committed felonies or are deprived of their liberty if they're convicted and so forth. Uh, so th those are legal questions. So there are all these different aspects. The religious question has to do with when the soul enters the body and what, what are the implications of this human life being made in the image and likeness of God. These are the religious theological aspects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that has no bearing on this. Uh, look, uh, Archbishop, when I first heard the president say this, I thought, clearly, this is a, uh, perhaps in, in, in the opinion of some, a smart political operation underway to uh, put all of these justices who are supporting the overturning of Roe in this religious box and say, well, you see, there are these odd religious people who feel they have to vote this way, and they, th their ruling should be considered in that light. How should the church and the bishops respond to Biden's complete distortion, it seems to me, of his professed faith when it comes to abortion? We've been trying to be clear on this, that it's not a matter of religious belief. We're not trying to impose our religion on everyone else. Is that what abolitionists were doing in the middle of the uh, 19th century? Were they imposing a religious belief that slavery is wrong on everyone else? 
there are certain ethical moral questions that are universal goods that we know from reason alone, right? We always make this distinction in our Catholic tradition of faith and reason. There are some things we can know from reason alone, certain basic ethical principles we can know, such as we should not kill innocent human life is one such example. We can know that from reason alone. And, and our law recognizes this in so many different ways. Homicide is wrong. That's not a religious belief. Religious endorses it, backs it up, gives us deeper insight into these uh, moral questions. Uh, arson, embezzlement, all these things are all, they're moral issues that are also crimes because they are wrong. Yeah. So killing an innocent human life should also be wrong. Now we get into other legal questions about the criminalization and the punishment of people involved in all that. There, there can be, we have to understand mitigating circumstances and all that. But it's it's not a religious question. Religion gives us deeper insights and, and teaches us right from wrong. Mm. But many of these things we can know by reason alone. Hmm. It's been a year since you wrote your pastoral letter, uh, Before I Formed You in the Womb, I Knew You, uh, which touched on human dignity and the unborn and Holy Communion and Catholics in public life. In it, you write, quote, those who reject the teaching of the Church on the sanctity of human life and those who do not seek to live in accordance with that teaching should not receive the Eucharist. Should Biden receive the Eucharist, Archbishop? I was trying in that pastoral letter to lay out the basic Catholic teaching, which we've always believed from the beginning. And with, in terms of being properly disposed to receive Holy Communion, one cannot be in a state of moral sin. Moral sin. We speak about it being in a state of grace, right? And if they are, God gives us the great blessing of the sacrament of penance. We can avail ourselves of that, receive his forgiveness in the sacramental absolution. So someone who promotes a grave moral evil, such as the killing of innocent human life, uh, is participating in that. That is very serious, and they're implicated in the sin. One could argue, well, they have to know that it's wrong. That's true. There has to be knowledge that it's, it's wrong, and there has to be the full consent of the will. But it's clear to me that those who are supporting abortion know that it's wrong because they will not answer a simple, straightforward question about the status of what's in the pregnant woman's womb. They will not answer a simple, straightforward question with a simple, straightforward answer. They always dodge the question, right? They change the subject. Uh, yeah. That tells me that they know that they're wrong. So knowing that they're well, wrong that and something that's gravely evil means they are implicit in a very serious sin and need sacramental absolution before receiving Holy Communion. Well, that's what's so odd about the, the president's statement there. He said aborting a child. I mean, so he's acknowledging the end result of the abortion. He's not saying, you know, uh, pregnancy termination or using a euphemism. He was pretty explicit in his comment there. Yes, and it shows, it shows what they really believe or what they really know in an unguarded moment, you know, when they forget to use their kind of deflective terminology. It shows that they really know what's going on. Uh, a member of your flock, Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, is also invoking her faith to justify abortion. Listen to this from this week. Draft of a decision that was an assault on women, lack of respect for women and their judgment, but it was a did violence not only to women, but to the Constitution of the United States. Now, I have five children in six years and one week. Catholic, went to church in Poland and all that. So um, I, mean, I, I respect the views of other people for themselves. I don't think they have any business telling women how they should deal with their own reproductive freedom. Your reaction, Archbishop? This is clearly contrary to everything we believe from the very beginning. Uh, the great one of the many great blessings of Christianity was bringing a higher moral standard into the world. And from the very beginning, the church has recognized the evil of abortion and has condemned it. Uh, so this is clearly out of line with uh, our Catholic principles, again, which are based on, on, on reason as well. They're, they're certainly not irrational. They're very reason based. And uh, the idea of not making decisions for someone else, again, where do we draw the line? Why do we draw the line at birth? And 
What is really frightening is some on the pro-abortion side are already beginning to speak about termination of life after birth. So how much further are they going to drag it out? Are we going to impose our beliefs on someone else who want the child killed after birth? And it seems uh, preposterous. We have to recognize the pro-abortion side has been getting more and more extreme in, in their positions. Remember the old phrase, legal, safe, and rare? When do we hear that anymore? So uh, it's it seemed they came to seem to keep being becoming more and more extreme because it's based on a fallacy to begin with. Hmm. USCCB pro life chairman uh, of the bishops conference, uh, William Lurie, Archbishop Lurie, issued a statement on Wednesday in response to this leaked draft of the SCOTUS opinion. He writes in part, as Catholics, we care about every unborn child and every mother. Our church has consistently witnessed in word and deed that life begins at the moment of conception. As we await the court's decision, we urge everyone to intensify their prayers and fasting that the final decision of the court will bring about the reversal of Roe and Casey. Now, Archbishop, assuming the final draft looks uh, like the draft we see before us, that the court has affirmed that is indeed Alito's draft, how will this impact the pro-life movement and the bishop's posture at both the state and the local level? Keep doing what we're doing. Uh, we, we will need to redouble our efforts uh, in both places, both states that are going to become far more radical with abortion, such as my own state of California. And those stations, the states that are going to limit it, and especially if they're going to outlaw it, we need to redouble efforts to love them both, right? This has been our approach all along, love them both. Women in crisis pregnancy uh, need support. They need love. The irony is, when they speak about choice, it's only women of means who have choice. Uh, women who are struggling economically so often really have no choice. They have no choice but abortion. So if they're in a state uh, where they're, they're struggling and they find themselves in this crisis pregnancy, they, just like anywhere else, they need to be surrounded by love and support. They need someone to walk with them, someone to tell them that it'll be okay. We're going to get this through this together. They need resources. I, I'm appalled that some states like my own and, and corporations too are going to pour massive resources into bringing women here to have abortions. But they're not putting those resources in, into efforts to give her the support she needs to give birth to her child. And then whatever decision she thinks is right for her to keep the child, parent the child herself, put the child up for adoption. There is always the old fashioned option of marriage. Sometimes that that is appropriate for a man who's responsible for what he's done. And there, there is a bond there already of love. So there are these other options, but I don't see those who are pouring massive resources into helping women get abortions, pouring similar massive resources to help the woman bring the child to birth. Yeah, the, no, no, I, I said to some founders of a crisis pregnancy home in, uh, in New Hampshire, the St. Gianna's place, I told them the other day, look, the, the moment for these crisis pregnancy centers and group homes has arrived. Uh, if Roe yeah. is struck down, women are going to be looking for an alternative and a safe place, a home, for they and their children. And um, perhaps uh, you're right, that moment has come and these corporations should think about uh, building closer bonds with their employees and giving women that option to have their children. Yes, a woman, a woman should never feel abandoned and afraid and all alone. That leads to disaster. Uh, she needs yeah. to be surrounded by love and support. And I'm so proud of our Cap fellow Catholics and other people of faith who are running these, these crisis pregnancy clinics. We're the only, I, I like to call our side the pro-choice side on this issue because our crisis pregnancy clinics offer her all the other choices. There's only one choice they don't offer. And the abortion clinics mm -hmm. offer only one choice. And one choice is no choice. You have to have at least two options mm -hmm. to have a choice. Archbishop Salvatore Cordelion, I thank you for your time and your clarity. You're welcome.